Hello and welcome to this episode of Stationeers Mars Survival Guide. I will teach you in this episode how to automate, well, semi-automate, turning on all the filtration units and this uh, water pump using just three logic chips and some cabling. So let's dive right into this shenanigan. All right, so first things first. Let's do something that I promised to do. Paint the stuff green. Boy Race UK, you're welcome. All right, so that was one thing that was weighing very heavily on me because I promised I will paint this cubicle a long while back and here is me fulfilling on that promise publicly. Right, so first we're gonna create three kit Logic I.O. chips. And this is actually quite a simplistic setup and it's not really full on filtration automation, but it is actually simplifying your life a great deal. And since I'm not really, you know, that much of an automation nerd, well, tr truth be told, I am. However, I think this will make your life simple enough and then later on it can be used as a basis for much stuff more. So the whole idea is once we turn on the on switch on the ice crusher, I want all of these filtration units, including this liquid pump, to start sucking things into the containers. Right. So without further ado, let's get to chip placement. So the first thing that I want to be placing is the logic reader. And this logic reader will be reading the status of the on switch of the ice crusher. So I'm thinking actually it will be the best way to put it like this. And then we need two batch writers. One batch writer will be writing the output of the what was read on the logic reader to all the filtration units. And the other one will be putting it on all the water pumps. Yes. So very simple setup. However, I think it does goes a long way in terms of l relieving the pain when you come want to be crushing ices or anything else. You want these filtration units to be, you know, up to the snuff. You want them to be working. So, all right. So we have two batch riders and one logic reader. Uh, I was actually banging my head for 15 minutes about how to place this batch writer in the most efficient way. And, uh, Honestly, this is what I've come up with. I don't know if anybody has a better, you know, placement that makes more sense. Uh, do let me know in the comments. However, I'm doing this for one specific reason, which I'm going to come to in a moment. So after much head scratching, I've decided to go with the design that I have initially come up with. And that's because it will make connections much easier. And this is the reason. So here I'm putting this output from the, you know, a logic reader, and I'm connecting it to the batch writer. You will notice that this circuit will be isolated. It won't be connected to the rest of the power and all that jazz due to the fact that it's data. And I don't need uh, anything more than data. And this will make the whole process of selecting which input I want to read a very simple for the batch writer. All right. So here I want to be connecting, um, the where's my oh, that one hold on let's connect this and i need to connect the power to the logic reader there we go i'm deliberately not connecting this data cable as you can see here that's why the output from the logic reader will be going into the two batch writers which makes the whole selection process very very simple so now i want to be taking the labeling tool we have the ice crusher here so i'm going to be taking out my labeling tool Okay, and I'm going to rename this logic reader. I always like to have the name component first because then I know what it is. And then ice crusher on. So this basically tells me to, that I'm monitoring if the ice crusher is on. And here we're going to have filtration atmo activate. Yeah, I can be an atmo activator and this will be the water pump activator. All right, good. Fair enough. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to work. Oh, and the sun is setting. You don't say. All right. So time to get to configuring the logic chips. So first we want to be ch ch checking uh, volume pump. No, small tank. No, 
liquid volume pump, liquid tank, large tank, ice crusher. There we go, ice crusher. And the value that we are reading is on, I think. Let me see, error, activate, not activate. Is it activate? No, that's just the triggering. Setting, required power, ratio, prefab, power. No, that's if it's powered. And it says cycle to on, on. Yes, that's the value I'm looking for. So let's just check. When we turn the ice crusher on, this should be one. It is, good. All right, let's turn it off then. We want to be conserving the power. Now, this will actually make this process simple. This is the reason why I only connected this as on, a, on an isolated bus. So when I cycle, logic, ice crusher on. See, it's the only value. Or actually there is a batch writer as well, but makes the whole process very, very simple. Output type. I want to be putting to all filtration units. So this is the Atmo activator. Okay, so filtration units. By the way, guys, if you're liking this episode, I urge you boop the like button. It helps me out a great deal. And uh, yeah, so you can spread to more people. Okay, so on and then we have another one. Cycle two, liquid volume pump. Come on, there we go. And also to on. Lock, setting, on. Good. So now all that is left is just to turn on these logic circuits and to see that everything is working as intended. Simple, right? So turn it on. Look at them. All of them lighting up and sucking the air and this volume pump also sucking the liquid. There we go, guys. Simple, Nespa. And if we turn it off, it will also turn off. So everything is synchronized with this ice crusher. I mean, you could also do it for the furnace. It's kind of the same thing, but I think this would be actually a lot more simple. So there we go, guys. I think that's enough for the today's episode. Do let me know if you like the content. Please smash that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials and more stuff like that, hit subscribe and I will be seeing you in the next one.